For this video, we're going to be discussing how to write and solve inequalities to solve real-world problems. So the procedure for doing this is very similar to when we did solving real-world equation problems. Our first step is always going to be to define our variables, our unknowns, what are we trying to figure out. Our second step will be to write an inequality to model the situation. And finally, we're going to solve the inequality. And part of writing the inequality is going to be determining what sign to use. Are we going to use a greater than symbol? Or are we going to use a less than symbol? Are we going to use greater than or equal to or less than or equal to? So here's a chart that shows you some common words for each of the different inequality symbols. So you should go ahead and pause the video right now and copy this chart down into your notes. So now that you have the chart, let's take a look at this. Some common words for the greater than symbol are greater than, more than, above, higher than, over, larger, exceeds, bigger. These are all words that are going to tell us that we're looking at the greater than symbol. You got a similar list here for the less than symbol. For greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, we have words like at least. Like if I told you a number is at least 7, that's saying the number is bigger than or equal to 7. Or that it is not less than 7. Same idea. At most is saying like a number is at most 12. That's saying it's less than or equal to 12. Similarly, similarly is no greater than or is not greater than will also tell us less than or equal to. So let's take a look at an example here. Example one says Tony has $400 in his bank account. He saves $50 of his allowance every month. Kayla has $100 in her bank account, but she's saving $75 every month. After how many months will Kayla have at least as much money as Tony? So what we want to do first, we want to define our variable. The question is asking us after how many months. So I am going to say that we're going to use M to represent the number of months. And now I think it would be good for us to go ahead and write an expression for each one of the two people that we're talking about here. So we've got Kayla and Tony. I'm going to do Kayla first. So it says Kayla already has $100 in her bank account, and she is saving $75 every month. Saving, we can think of as adding to the amount of money that she has. So we can write an expression for Kayla as being 100 plus 75 times M, with M being our number of months. Tony has $400, and he is saving $50 of his allowance every month. So he's also adding to his bank account. So his looks like this. And we want to know how long is it going to take for Kayla to have more money or to have at least as much money as Tony. So that's our key right here. We got to figure out what symbol goes there. And right here we see at least. All right, if we go back, at least is a greater than or equal to symbol. So that at least tells us that we want to write it like this. Okay, so now we need to solve our inequality. Kayla is gr Kayla 100 plus 75m is at least greater than or equal to Tony, who is 400 plus 50m. So I'm going to say that we should probably subtract 50m on both sides. At the same time, we'll subtract 100 from both sides to get all our variables and constants on one side. This side, 75 minus 50, gives me 25 M, greater than or equal to. On this side, 400 minus 100 is 300. Now I need to divide both sides by 25. This is a positive 25, so we don't have to worry about our symbol changing, so we get M is greater than or equal to 300 divided by 25, which is 12. So we know 
that when M is greater than or equal to 12, Kayla has at least as much money as Tony. So the question says, how many months? Well, we gotta think, what is the smallest number that is a solution to M is greater than or equal to 12? And the answer to that is 12 months. So after a year, after 12 months, Kayla will have at least as much money as Tony. Before that, Tony has more money than Kayla. So at month 11, Tony has more money. At month five, Tony has more money. But any month after month 12, Kayla will have more money. All right, at month 13, Kayla will have more. At month 14, and so on. At month 12, they're even. So that's when she has at least as much money as him. All right, let's take a look at example two. It says it costs Chevy twenty thousand or twenty million dollars to develop and market a new model of car. They sell each car for twenty five thousand dollars. We want to know how many cars does Chevy need to sell to make more than five million dollars in profits. So let's start by defining our variable. I'm going to say C equals the number of cars, since in the question it asks how many cars. All right, now before I write my, my inequality here, we gotta talk about how do we come up with profits? Well, profits are always sales minus costs. Always, that's always what profits are, sales minus costs. So if we try and figure out our sales, it says the company sells each car for $25,000. So we could write our sales as like 25,000 25, C, C being the number of cars. If they sell one car, they make $25,000. If they make sell two cars, they make 50. If they sell three, they make 75, and so on. And we're gonna subtract our costs, which is 20 million. And now we wanna decide, okay, how does that relate to this five million? Well, it says right here, more than five million. So that's what our inequality ends up being, more than five million or greater than five million. So now I just need to solve this inequality, all right? Our first step is that we are going to add 20 million on both sides. Make sure I get enough zeros in there. All right, cancels out over here. I have 25,000. C is greater than 25 million. All right. Now, to figure out what C is greater than, I have to divide both sides by 25,000. Two, three. Okay. So now, I'm going to go ahead do my division here. These two zeros cancel out, these cancel out, these cancel out. Now I've got 25,000 divided by 25, which gives me 1,000. All right. And since I've been known to make some math mistakes on this, let's just make sure that I know I'm, what I'm doing is correct. We'll do 25 million. Do I have enough zeros? One, two, three, four, five, six, divided by 25,000. And we get 1,000, okay. I can do math, good. Don't need to worry about the sign because this is positive. So I get C is greater than 1,000. Now, we need to be careful here. My answer is not 1,000. No, okay? We said C is greater than 1,000, and I want to know how many cars does Chevy have to sell. So I want to think, what is the smallest number I can plug in for C that is greater than 1,000? Well, the company can't sell like half a car, so the answer ends up being 1,001 cars. If the company sells 1,001 cars, they will have a profit of greater than $5 million dollars. It'll end up being five million twenty-five thousand dollars. All right, you got. You need to see that because C is greater than a thousand, one thousand cannot be the answer. 
The answer has to be 1001. All right, let's take a look at example number three. It says, on our last three tests at algebra, Micah has scored an 83, an 87, and a 92. What score does she need to get on her next test if she wants, to, wants the average of all four tests to be higher than a 90? So this is kind of different, but we're going to go through it. So first we need to find our variable. It says, what score? So I am going to use S for her test score. And now, this says that we want her average, her average to be higher than a 90. So average, how do we find the average? Well, find the average of some numbers, you just add them all up and then divide by the total. For example, if I want to find the average of, um, say, 60 and 40, all right? I'd say, well, 60 plus 40 divided by 2, that's 100 divided by 2, that's 50. So the average of 60 and 40 is 50. So to find the average of our four tests, well, I'm going to add all four tests up, 83 plus 87 plus 92 plus, well, this says x, so let's go ahead and change my s here. Let me change my S here, whatever. We'll just call this S. Let's call that an X for the test score. All right. So I'm going to take those four test scores, 83, 92, and X, and I'm going to divide them by four. All right. To find the average, we just add them all up and divide by our number. All right. I have four items here, so that's what I'm dividing by. So it's 83 plus 87 plus 92 plus x, all divided by 4. Now I need to figure out what's my inequality symbol going to be. Well, it says higher here. And we know from our chart that higher tells me greater than. So now I need to figure out what is the minimum test score she needs to get so that her test so that her average will be higher than 90. So our first step is going to be to combine like terms up top here. So I'm going to do 83 plus 87 plus 92. That gives me 262 plus x. All divided by 4 is greater than 90. All right. Now, Solve this inequality, I need to multiply both sides by 4. This side, I get 262 plus x is greater than 90 times 4, which is 360. Don't need to worry about the signs changing because this is a positive number I'm multiplying by. Now I need to subtract 262 on both sides. All right, 360 minus 262 gives me 98. So x has to be greater than 98. Okay, so now we need to ask ourselves, is 98 the answer? Well, if we plugged it in, is 98 bigger than 98? The answer to that is no. 98 is not our answer. So we got to think, what is a number that we could get that would work? How about 99. All right, 99 is bigger than 98, so it is the first answer we have, or the first score that we have, that works for this problem. So in order for her to get a 90, an average of greater than a 90, she would have to get a 99 on her next test. All right, next we have example four. It says Nancy has $500. And she's going to spend $20 every day. Gwen has no money, but she makes $30 every day. After how many days are they going to have more than $800 altogether? All right, so let's define our variable. It says right here, how many days. So let's go ahead and use D for the number of days. Now we want to know how much will they have more than $800 altogether. So let's write an expression for each one of them. For Nancy, we know she already has $500, and 
and she's spending 20 of that every day. Spending is subtraction, so that's 500 minus 20D. Gwen doesn't have any money, so she starts at zero, but she's making $30 every day, so that's a positive 30D. We have this word here, all together, which means that what we're doing is taking the amount of money Nancy has, the amount of money Gwen has, and we're adding that, all right? And we want to know it all together, after how long will they have more than $800? More than, telling me I'm using the greater than symbol, and 800. So my inequality here is 500 minus 20D plus 30D is greater than 800. So now we just need to work this out. First step is to combine our like terms. Negative 20D plus 30D is plus 10D. We've got greater than 800 here. Subtract 500 on both sides. I get 10D is greater than 300. Divide both sides by 10. Don't have to worry about the sign because this is positive. 300 divided by 10 is 30. So I get D is greater than 30. So can my answer be 30 days? No, it cannot, okay? 30 is not bigger than 30. So my answer is 31 days. Because after 31 days, if we figure this out, well, 10 times 31 is 310. 310 plus 500 is 810, which is greater than 800. If I plugged in 30 here, 10 times 30 is 300 plus 500 equals 800. But we don't want it to be equal. We want it to be greater than. So I'm going to leave you with this try-it problem. It says, at his job, Jack makes $300 per week plus $15 per hour in overtime. After how many hours of overtime would Jack need, or how many hours of overtime would Jack need to work to make more than $450 in one week? So you need to go ahead and solve this problem for class tomorrow.